Rhubar was walking in his garden on a day that could only be described as perfect flying weather, an aviator's dream. Big jets scribbled new vapor trails all over a freshly squeegeed sky. He felt the wind in his fur. Ah! Oh, sorry. Oh, Rhubarb, you're so wonderfully clumsy when you're busy writing a play, darling, cooed Poodle Princess. He was still looking up. You know, Poodles, Rhubarb began. Oh, Rhubarb, I know what you're going to say, darling. Your new play is for me, she flooded, but Rhubarb had other things on his mind. Sitting in front of his computer in a flight of fancy, Rhubarb marveled over the pictures of his magnificent model airplane. His love of flying all started with a spike, two strap-on wings, and a garden swing. A long time ago. Waking from his daydream, Rhubarb's think waves began to flow once more. Then he turned to an equally important design job, the trophy. When Custard arrived. Have you ever made a model aeroplane? Rhubarb asked, knowing the answer. What? muttered Custard. I'm planning a model aeroplane show. Aerobatics, loop the loop, that sort of stuff. Interested? <laughs> There'd be a prize, Rhubarb added. What, you mean money? No, said Rhubarb. A beautiful trophy, which will really be a scrumptious golden sponge cake. I say, an air show. Count me in, squeaked Mouse with great enthusiasm. Custard, can I put you down as a yes? Rhubarb queried. Uh, what, aero bats and things, you say? Aerobatics, model aeroplanes, remote controlled. You won't have to do anything, said Rhubarb. And with that, Custard scuttled off and said he'd think about it. Now for Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess, said Rhubarb, and picked up his bone phone. Poodles, I... No, no, you won't have to race an aeroplane, explained Rhubarb. No, Moggy will not have to drive an aeroplane. I just wanted to know if you two would present the trophy to the winner of my air show, said Rhubarb. And with that, Poodle Princess said she'd ask Moggy. Finally, said Rhubarb. They've agreed to present the trophy, he sighed. Ugh, oh, after all that waiting, whispered Mouse to himself. As Rhubarb's alarm clock at four o'clock, model planes and their excited owners lined up at the end of the old strip of carpet that Rhubarb had put out as a runway. The atmosphere buzzed with aeroplane chatter like, George, Roger, over and out. Well done, said Rhubarb in a high altitude kind of way, as Rabbit's floppy looking aircraft volunteered into place. Ah, oh, Mo, love the headlight. Wizard, what? I say, rookie. Red? Ah, a proper kite, what? Charlie, good luck. <laughs> Ciao. Meanwhile, Custard was on the other side of the fence, doing a deal with some bother birds. He didn't know their names, only that their leader was called Feather. OK, you know exactly what to do, Custard whispered, as Feather climbed into his flying boots and zipped up his sinister flying jacket. Yeah, snorted Feather, who now resembled a foul-looking black aeroplane. And with that, Custard pulled back a loose plank in the fence, and the evil Feather hopped through. Oi, Feather! No hopping! Remember, you are an aeroplane, Custard whispered hoarsely, and Feather lined up with the other model planes. Ahem! Ahem, Rhubarb. Welcome to the Model Aeroplane Show. Points will be awarded for Grace Flying, he announced, and the race got off with a bang. Everything okay? smiled Rhubarb. Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone nodded a yes. Neither wanted to tell Rhubarb that they'd seen an aeroplane running.
Finally, with the air show over and all planes safely on the ground, Rhubarb addressed the afternoon crowd and those magnificent model makers with their splendid flying machines. I have great delight to announce Custard as winner of the... Excuse me, said Rabbit. Custard's black aeroplane is eating the trophy. You there! You're not a bird. You're supposed to be a plane. That's cheating, you sticker! shouted Rhubarb and presented Rabbit with what was left of the delicious trophy. <laughs> and you forget flying, you're grounded! He went on. And the birds cheered and flew around in circles, and everyone. <laughs>Lunchtime. Rhubarb was hungry and his thumb was getting tired. Come on, come on, Custard, move! Rhubarb begged, but move he didn't. It had been three hours since a slight swish of the tail had knocked a fly silly, and one and a half hours since a sultry yawn had sent the slothful cat into a deep, deep sleep. How does he manage to lie so still for so long? Rhubarb muttered out loud as Mouse scuttled into his kitchen and inquired what all the activity was about. Activity? Rhubarb gasped. Activity? I have been sitting here, stone still, since sunrise, counting the seconds that that cat has not moved. The only thing that has moved is my stopwatch, Rhubarb growled, as Mouse took a step back and wondered if the dog had gone crackers. Oh, uh, sorry, Mouse, you must think I'm... Uh... <laughs> Crackers. Uh, it's the stopwatch uh, the spying on Custard, trying to see what he's up to. <laughs> Don't concern yourself, said Rhubarb. I am definitely not Crackers. I'll begin again. Ah, oh, Mouse, there you are. Good morning, splendid day. Like some refreshment, a hot cheese drink, perhaps? Rhubarb, said Mouse, I know that you are not mad, and I know that you have been d d desperately trying to get Custard to move. I do understand. So... I have been thinking and I have come up with a plan. He's as balmy as I am, thought Rhubarb. Then realised what Mouse had said and almost exploded as he repeated the word plan and embraced Mouse most enthusiastically. Well, uh, squeaked Mouse as he finally managed to draw breath once more. There is a way that I believe would shift custard off the fence. Make the cat move. Not the old chocolate-covered fish gizzard's trick, please, groaned Rhubarb. No, said Mouse, and stood his ground. Molecular redistribution, he went on. We zap the very atoms he is made of. Then he waited as Rhubarb simply stared until he suddenly realised what Mouse had said and his fingers begged for more. In the shed, Mouse, rodent scholar from Silicon Valley, turned on the computer and asked Rhubarb, who was jogging on the mouse wheel, to give it all he'd got. It worked, and when Rhubarb came to in the old armchair, Mouse had finally masterminded the Molecular Optical Viewpoint Evaporator, a computer program known simply as Move. All was ready to go, so with a single tap on the keyboard, the roof port slid quietly open, and Rhubarb sky stuffed word and bleat, and within seconds they had a complete and detailed plan of the garden sorted. Okay, said Mouse. Pink cat, zoom in. Capture body shape. Molecular redistribution 100%. Atom switch on. Move that cat. It worked. In seconds, Custard had been quietly and efficiently beamed from one fence and plonked perfectly onto the opposite. The birds made so much chatter that Custard woke with a start. Uh, uh, Oi! He said. This is not my fence. What am I doing here? That is my fence. And then the trouble started. Stay here and stay in control. I'll try to calm him down, said Rhubarb. I'll be back in a tick. And as he stepped out of the shed, Rhubarb was accidentally zapped by the move disc, which was buffeting about in the wind. Take no notice, keep going, he thought to himself in a rhubarb kind of way, till he came
came across a poodle princess who laughed like a hyena at his green molecule with very different beak-like nose. Moggy Malone turned up on what looked like Wookie's legs. What's going on? She wanted to know, and the birds shrieked with laughter when she chattered like post dogs' weasels. We haven't the faintest idea, said Rhubarb. Or was it custard? <laughs> Oi, I don't know what you're laughing at, but I intend to get this sorted, barked Custard. Or was it Rhubarb? And marched off to the shed and fainted when he saw a Mouse. Or was it Mole? Talking to Rookie, who was hopping about like Rabbit. Zap, squeak, zap, squeak, the move disc swung around in the breeze, zapping wildly in a hit and miss frenzy until Rhubarb's garden looked like theme park on Nightmare Boulevard. I have been known to do in what I call, call, call an extreme state of affairs. You mean in a pickle? <laughs> said Rhubarb in a custard kind of way. And yes, Mouse agreed and admitted that when the computer misbehaves seriously, he simply pulls its plug out. Ha! Did you hear that, everybody? All that Mouse, Rome's scholar of Silicon Valley fame, can come up with is to pull the plug out, and all will be well. How cold he is that? Custard whined on, and the birds barked hysterically until they fell out of the old conquer tree. It didn't work, said Moggy Princess, and Poodle Malone sang, Born Lollar Darlings, and the shed took off like a rocket. Where's Custard? Asked Mouse. Uh, shit! Bark the bird. <laughs> well, at least we got him off the fence. Yawned Rhubarb. There are no controls! Since well before dawn, Rhubarb had been trundling in and out of his house, throwing mysterious parcels into the bright orange rubbish skip he'd rented. The weighty packages thumped against the sides of the skip, and some extra heavy reading proved to be very noisy indeed, especially at that time in the morning. Mouse, brilliant rodent scholar from Silicone Valley, was out and about on the lawn doing press-ups and wondering what all the noise was about. When Rhubarb appeared at the door again, he looked dog-tired as he struggled with the very last bundle. Well, oh, that's it. The end of an era, he puffed and heaved the bag with such a final burst of energy that it sailed right over the skip and landed with a thump on the other side of the fence. Uh, that'll wake a lazy pose if anything does, scoffed Mouse as he handed Rhubarb a hammer and they chuckled off down to the shed to adjust the computer. Here, yeah, them bundles is bundles of books. The skip is full of books. Why is he throwing books away? crowed Rookie, who was scanning the skip through binoculars. Good morning, bonjour, hasta la vista, etc., etc., jibber jabbered rhubarb in all over the place accents in no less than fumph languages as he and Mouse stepped from the shed. Here we go, said Mo, another new crackpot idea coming up. While Rhubarb continued his speech in just one language, he announced that he had gathered together all the stories and all the facts in the world, and that he had stored them safely in what he called Megamind, his latest and very clever computer stuff, double saved, of course. He then went on to explain that Mouse, the famous computer engineer, rodent scholar, and cheese and line dancing artist of Silicon Valley, was an expert in Megamind software, and books were no longer necessary. Everything that had ever been in a book was now safe in the computer. Mouse? The need to ha 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 hoard dusty old heavy books in order to read stories and learn facts is obsolete, gone. No longer needed. The new Megamind software has revolutionized learning. Well, I'm not sure about books no longer being needed, said Moggy Malone. 
But because I have a degree of intelligence, I do agree about computers changing the way we do things, especially Rhubarb's computer. And Poodle Princess agreed wholeheartedly. Thank you, thank you, girls. You are right, fluffed Rhubarb. We depend on computers, like mine, to unravel and unscramble the rambling gobbledygook which is spoken by some individuals who refuse, out of pure stubbornness, to recognise the value of computers. I do not agree, said Custard confidently. You are spouting rubbish. How can anyone learn anything without reading great tomes? Books, my friends, books such as this magnificent mine of information, he expressed with authority and threw down the hefty book with a thud, challenging Rhubarb and Mouse, Rodent Scholar, and their computer to a duel, a fight between the written word and the microchip. We take up your challenge instantly, sir, scoffed Rhubarb and reached for the book. Ah, 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 naughty, naughty, the book is mine. The computer is yours, said Custard. And so, close to blowing a fuse, Rhubarb turned to Mouse and announced the Mega Mind duel. And may the best brain win, he huffed, and turned on his paws and returned to his shed. <laughs> Welcome, one and all, Rhubarb announced with great confidence as he stepped into the limelight. Welcome to Mega Mind, a battle of wits between Custard a mere mortal who has only recently read his first book, and the dreaded power of my computer. Custard sank into the blatantly uncomfortable chair, while Mouse, rodent scholar, went into the shed, jumped on the mouse wheel to boot up the computer and unleash its intimidating knowledge. The battle was about to begin. Moggy Malone had agreed to set the tests and ask the questions on the strict understanding that there was to be no mucking about. While Poodle Princess had prepared a delicious spread of Marlebone jellies, chocolate fish guts and loads of brightly coloured fizzy fantastic drinkies. Bluebell rang a silver bell and Megamind began as Moggy presented the first question. Question one. What is it, Mouse? asked Rhubarb as Mouse rocked back and forth on the mouse wheel. It's the disk drive, whispered Mouse. A disk drive? inquired Rhubarb, getting himself into a spin. What's wrong with it? It's got the wo wo wobbles, explained Mouse, just as a terrible growling noise started up as a hard disk broke loose from its bolts, drilled right through the computer, up through Rhubarb's prized dried onions, and out through the top of the shed like a mad circular saw. The garden animals went wild with laughter. Custard stood up and claimed the Mega Mind Championship and Rhubarb stared daggers at Mouse, rodent scholar, who was searching wildly through a well-thumbed book. What now? demanded Rhubarb. Uh, it's the instruction book, squeaked Mouse apologetically, and Custard claimed victory over the computer and invited everyone to refreshments under the old conquer tree. Are you adjoining us, Rhubarb, darling? asked Poodle Princess. <laughs> or <laughs> are you otherwise booked? for the evening, scoffed Custard. <laughs> it had been one of those very ordinary days in Rhubarb's garden, one of those days when the sun doesn't even bother to get out of bed, so neither had Rhubarb. It had been one of those days. Finally, the old street light outside Rhubarb's house twinkled on and Rhubarb's alarm clock rattled its bones. Time to get up. Time to journey into the space. Oh, I do love the nightlife, he said to himself in a talking-to-himself kind of way. Good evening. Here's the news. Wireless crackled as Rhubarb tucked into his favourite breakfast, baked bones on toast. Ah, just as everyone else is thinking about dinner, I'm starting my new day. All night, as the case may be for most, he munched and devoured the newspaper story about The Thing That Spoke, a film now showing at the local cinema. Well, we'll be off to see the film then, 
warbled Moggy Malone as she and Poodle Princess tiptoed like ghosts through the kitchen and waved their cinema tickets. The thing that spoke, they whispered, and were gone. Have they gone? inquired Custard. Disappeared into the night, crunched Rhubarb, and went on to say that Mouse was down in the shed and that if he hadn't already eaten our midnight feast, we should have the computer running, so as to say, and the satellite equipment ready to probe the space to search the stars. Sure enough, Mouse was on the mouse wheel and the computer was about to fire up so that they could monitor any information that they might find in the space. Rhubarb wound the sky scanner wheel this way and that, trying to pinpoint the whereabouts on whatever it was they were looking for. That is what happened. Whatever it was began to pulse into the shed's nerve center. Could it be that this was the night? The one night since the beginning of time when the three chums would discover secrets of the space all from Rhubarb's shed? Opening Star Bay 2, Rhubarb announced. And with that, he pushed the cellular sensitive receptive antenna out through the squeaky trap door in the shed roof. In the meantime, the sky scanner's dish slowly turned this way and that, roaming the star-clustered heavens. Slowly but surely, Rhubarb's sophisticated equipment investigated patterns of stars, the plow, the pole star, and then turned majestically towards Mars itself and probed deep into the space. And all the time, Custard kept asking about the bear. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Custard, whispered Mouse. If you're really desperate for the bear, then eat it, chocolate and all, but do it quietly, please. Oh, and while you're at it, you may as well polish off the last of the fairy buns. No, I just want the chocolate bear, said Custard. Eyes met. Nothing was said. Rhubarb didn't blink. Custard stopped eating. Mouse didn't move. What could it be? whispered Rhubarb into Mouse's ear. Just as Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone tumbled into the shed, both as white as ghosts. <laughs> it's out there, puffed Moggy. I've never in all my life ever seen or heard such a strange thing as is out there, she wheezed. And Poodle Princess nodded dramatically and didn't, or couldn't, utter a single sound. As sure as I'm standing here, I tell you, that whatever it is, the creature has millions of teeth, she gasped, while all the time the thumping thumps came closer. Mouse, efficient as ever, switched the listening devices to automatic and Rhubarb turned the shed light off. Hiding in the corner of the shed, the plucky little group huddled together, except for Rhubarb, who plucked up enough courage to peep through the window. Look at the house! Rhubarb whispered with a thin, awestruck breath. Look at the strange shadow. Is it the thing that spoke? It can't be the thing that spoke. It hasn't said anything yet, whispered Moggy. Oh, Rhubarb, darling, I may be out for some time, said Poodle Princess, and fainted. The others stared at the shadow. Oh, it's millions of teeth, whispered Moggy. It's moving, squeaked Mouse, just as the shed door burst open. And everyone ran off into the night, even Poodle Princess, who was still asleep. The sky scanner was left to scan the sky, the computer was left humming to itself, and the last of the fairy buns were left in the dark. When Mrs. Hedgehog waddled into the shed, it looked, she thought, as though someone had left in a hurry. She wondered what on earth had happened. I thought I heard someone here. Someone must have scared them off, she muttered to herself, and shrugged her prickly shoulders and began to tuck into the delicious fairy buns. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Can't let these go <laughs> stale, she munched. And suddenly, she was aware of a strange noise. It sounded very close indeed. Oh. I don't like the sound of that at all, said Mrs. Hedgehog, and rolled off into the night just as the computer started talking gibberish. Moments later, Rhubarb's garden lit up, brighter than an ordinary day, and with one last thurump, whatever it was, it was gone. And gone too 
was Mrs. Hedgehog's shadow from the house. Was there something out there that night? I'm sure I heard something. Whiz! The home of ABCs, 1s through 3s, and all your favourite kids' TV characters. Now let's find Kids TV. Or I can press this microphone. Whiz. That's how easy it is.